China just crossed a barrier that the West said was impossible without them. Engineers reportedly sleeping at factories. Alleged fake identities. Claimed million-dollar payments. This isn't science fiction. This is the biggest tech race of the 21st century, and the finish line just moved. Before I tell you what they built, you need to understand. The technology at the center of this is the reason your phone works, AI exists, and advanced militaries maintain their edge. Reuters just broke a major story. Chinese scientists have created a prototype machine capable of producing advanced semiconductor chips, specifically, an experimental extreme ultraviolet lithography system. Now, if you've never heard of EUV lithography, let me put this in perspective. There is literally one company on planet Earth that makes production-grade EUV machines. ASML, a Dutch company. Their machines cost $250 million each. They're the size of a bus. And they're the only proven way to manufacture the most advanced semiconductor chips at scale. These chips power everything. Smartphones, AI systems like ChatGPT, advanced defense systems. Without access to these manufacturing capabilities, you're locked out of cutting-edge technology development. And here's the stunning part. Four months ago, ASML CEO said it would take China a very, very long time to develop this technology. That timeline may have been too conservative. According to Reuters, the prototype was completed in early 2025 and is currently being tested at a facility in Shenzhen. The machine reportedly takes up an entire production workshop. And here's the technical milestone. It is successfully generating extreme ultraviolet light. Now, critical distinction. It's not yet producing usable chips. This is not an ASML-level production system. But it is the first credible sign that China has crossed the EUV barrier. Something analysts thought was years, possibly decades away. But how did China get here? Because according to Reuters sources, the methods allegedly use sound like something from an espionage thriller. Here's what Reuters sources claim. The prototype was reportedly built by a team that includes former ASML engineers, people who previously worked on these exact systems in the Netherlands. According to the sources, these engineers were allegedly compensated with bonuses ranging from $420,000 to $700,000. Some were reportedly issued fake identities and worked under false names. These are serious allegations that speak to the intensity and secrecy surrounding this project. And the reported security measures? They're extraordinary. Engineers allegedly sleeping on site. Limited phone access. This level of operational security suggests something far beyond a typical R&D project. Reuters sources compared this effort to China's version of the Manhattan Project, America's secret program to develop the atomic bomb during World War II. But instead of splitting atoms, they're working with extreme ultraviolet light. Wavelengths so small they can etch circuits onto silicon wafers that are thousands of times thinner than a human hair. The reported methodology? Reverse engineering. According to sources, China acquired old ASML machines on the secondary market through intermediaries, along with parts from Nikon and Canon. They then allegedly disassembled them to understand the underlying technology. Now here's where it gets geopolitical. Reuters reports that Huawei most likely coordinates parts of this network, though direct public confirmation doesn't exist. This isn't portrayed as a rogue operation. This is described as state-directed at the highest levels. So China built a prototype lithography system. Why does this matter so much? Because semiconductor manufacturing capability is directly tied to economic competitiveness and strategic autonomy. Let me explain the strategic landscape. Right now, the most advanced chips in the world are manufactured by companies like TSMC in Taiwan, Intel in the US, and Samsung in South Korea. They all depend on ASML's EUV machines. The United States has used export controls to restrict China's access to this technology. 
the logic was straightforward. Control the manufacturing equipment, and you control who can produce cutting-edge chips. If China can't access advanced chip-making tools, they face serious constraints in AI development, telecommunications infrastructure, and defense modernization. But if China can develop indigenous EUV lithography capability, that fundamentally changes the equation. They would reduce, not eliminate, but significantly reduce, their dependence on Western semiconductor manufacturing choke points. And here's what signals how serious this is. According to Chinese state media, the national semiconductor strategy is overseen by Ding Zhijiang, one of President Xi Jinping's closest confidants and chairman of the Communist Party's Central Commission for Science and Technology. This is part of China's six-year government initiative to achieve semiconductor self-sufficiency. Xi Jinping has publicly identified this as a top national priority. Think about what that represents. The world's second largest economy is marshalling massive resources toward independence in the one technology that underpins modern economic and military power. And based on this Reuters report, they may be years ahead of where most Western analysts expected them to be. So when might China actually start producing chips with this system? Because right now it's an experimental prototype. Well, according to Reuters sources, the Chinese government has set an ambitious internal target, 2028. Sources told Reuters that the government wants working chips produced on this prototype by 2028. That's three years from now. However, the scientists working on the project reportedly believe 2030 is more realistic. Even at 2030, that's five years. Analysts originally estimated China might not achieve this capability until the late 2030s or even the 2040s. If they hit a 2030 timeline, they've potentially accelerated by a decade. But there's a major challenge still ahead. And it's the same technical barrier that has protected ASML's monopoly for years, precision optics. China has reportedly achieved EUV light generation. That's the breakthrough. But producing the high-precision optics required to focus that light and reliably etch nanometer scale circuits? That remains the harder problem. These aren't ordinary lenses. EUV optics are among the most precisely manufactured objects in human history. We're talking about mirrors polished so smooth that if you scaled them up to the size of the United States, the largest imperfection would be less than a centimeter tall. Western suppliers like Zeiss in Germany make these components. China doesn't yet have demonstrated equivalent capability, but they're clearly working toward it. Additionally, production-grade systems require consistent uptime, overlay precision and defect control, all areas where ASML has decades of engineering refinement. One critical point often missed. Early EUV prototypes are not designed for immediate mass production. According to reports, these machines are massive, reportedly filling entire workshops, energy-intensive and prone to alignment and stability issues. The rational engineering path is rapid architectural iteration, shrinking the system, improving uptime, and tightening error margins before any serious production rollout. Let's talk about what this development could mean for global technology competition. Because this isn't just about chip manufacturing. This is about AI capability, defense technology, and economic leverage. First, it's important to separate China's progress in DUV lithography, where domestic tools are already entering trial production at facilities like SMIC, from EUV, which remains experimental and far more complex. If China eventually achieves production-capable EUV capability, here's what potentially shifts. 1. AI development in China could proceed with reduced constraints on accessing advanced computing hardware. Though they'd still face challenges around GPU architecture, memory technology, and software ecosystems, one structural advantage China does possess is energy scale. 
EUV tools and large AI clusters are extraordinarily power-hungry, and access to abundant, relatively stable electricity lowers long-term operating constraints, though it doesn't replace the need for advanced chips, software, or architecture. 2. Defense Technology Development Accelerates Advanced chips are critical for autonomous systems, signal processing, cyber capabilities, and AI-integrated defense platforms. 3. Economic Leverage Changes Currently, restricting access to advanced chip manufacturing is a significant policy tool. If China develops indigenous capability, that leverage diminishes. 4. Taiwan's strategic significance evolves. TSMC's dominance in advanced chip manufacturing is one factor in Taiwan's geopolitical importance. Indigenous Chinese capability would change, not eliminate, that calculation. Another underappreciated factor is talent circulation. Over the past several years, China has actively attracted experienced engineers with prior exposure to advanced fabrication facilities, chip design, and lithography systems. That doesn't eliminate technical barriers, but it does shorten learning curves. And here's the strategic reality. You can slow technological diffusion, but you rarely stop it completely. Export controls bought time, but they also created massive incentives for China to invest in domestic alternatives. Some technology policy experts now argue that aggressive restrictions may have actually accelerated China's commitment to self-sufficiency. It's the classic security dilemma applied to industrial policy. When one country restricts access to critical technology, the other country treats developing that technology as a national imperative. So here's where we stand. China has a working EUV prototype. It's generating extreme ultraviolet light. It's not yet production ready, but it exists, and that changes the timeline everyone was working with. Final thoughts. This story is still unfolding. The prototype isn't manufacturing chips yet. Major technical challenges remain around optics, precision, and production reliability. But the fact that this milestone has been reached ahead of most expert predictions signals a fundamental shift in the global semiconductor landscape. There's also a broader industry reality worth noting. As chip processes approach physical limits below 2 nanometers, costs rise faster than performance gains. That means future competition may be decided less by absolute node leadership and more by system-level efficiency, including architecture, software optimization, and total cost of ownership. The question isn't whether China will eventually develop advanced lithography capability anymore. The question is when they'll achieve production viability and what the strategic landscape looks like when they do. Because whoever can manufacture cutting-edge chips domestically doesn't just gain economic advantage. They gain strategic autonomy in the defining technology of this century. If this story gave you a new perspective on the global tech race, share it. Most people don't realize how far this competition has already progressed. The future is being built right now, and it's happening faster than the headlines suggest.